So a very good day to one and all. I am Dr. Rohit Kupina and today we will be discussing about a very important organ in the reticuloendothelial system of the body, spleen. Spleen is a classical wedge shaped organ located in the left upper abdomen in close proximity to the ribs and it is it, in fact it is located along the long axis of the 10th rib. So before we go on to the pathologies involving the spleen, we need to have a basic understanding regarding the anatomy of the spleen. Now the spleen is a wedge shaped organ. So the shape of spleen is best described by my hand here. So this is how the spleen is. So a spleen has an outer surface, you can see here, it is also called a diaphragmatic surface. Now this surface comes in contact with the ribs and you find that there will be an imprint of the 10th rib along its uh, diaphragmatic surface. So the spleen itself is located, the, the long axis of the spleen is located along the 10th rib. Now, this diaphragmatic surface, like I said, is in close proximity to the left hemidiaphragm. So, the inner surface of the spleen has certain surfaces or certain specific areas or can be divided into certain specific areas. So, the inner surface of the spleen has what is called as a renal surface wherein it comes in contact with the left kidney. It has, the, it has a gastric surface wherein com, where it comes in contact with the stomach. It has a colic surface wherein it comes in contact with the splenic flexure of the colon. Now, the hilum is also located in this area. The hilum is the area where the splenic artery and the vein enter into the spleen. One very important point to be noted is that the splenic artery and the vein starts bifurcating before it enters into the splenic parenchyma, which is a very important point to be noted. Now, the spleen has a superior pole or an upper pole and a lower pole. So, the lower pole is the one which enlarges as the splenomegaly comes into play. Now, these surfaces like I had mentioned earlier are important because they are areas where attachment of certain ligaments are present. For example, the renal surface you have the lino-renal ligament which contains the tail of pancreas. So, this is the area where pancreatic injury occurs when you are doing a splenectomy. The gastric uh, surface, you have a ligament called the gastrosplenic ligament, which contains the short gastric artery, which supplies the fundus of the stomach and a portion, upper portion of the greater curvature. The colic surface actually comes in contact with the splenic flexure and to the splenic flexure from the diaphragm, you have a ligament called a phrenicocolic ligament. This phrenicocolic ligament is sort of restricts the enlargement of the spleen. So, this, this ligament is the reason why spleen always enlarges superiorly first and then is, uh, enlarges inferiorly. So, you find that the splenic enlargement is limited initially by the presence of this phrenicocolic ligament and also it directs the splenic enlargement towards the right iliac fossa. So, this is again very important. So, while dissecting or while doing a splenectomy, Injury to the splenic flexure can occur while dividing the phrenicocolic ligament. So, you find that when you look at this picture, this picture here is very important. You find that the tail of the pancreas, you find it as a, is at a higher level when compared to the body and the neck of the head of the pancreas. Okay, and its association with the hilum can again be reinforced here. So, it is located with the, within the lino-renal ligament. Now, so with this basic understanding about the structure of the spleen, let us now go on to the uh, vascular anatomy of spleen. The spleen, like I said earlier, is a part of the lympho reticuloendothelial system. It performs a large number of functions which are hematologically very important. So, as a result, it needs a very good blood supply. The major blood supply or the blood, su the blood supply to the spleen is by the splenic artery. The splenic artery is a branch of the celiac trunk which itself is a branch of the abdominal iota. To be precise, the celiac trunk is an anterior branch of the abdominal iota. The splenic artery, once it comes from the uh, celiac trunk, tends to pass posterior to the pancreas at the level of the head and the neck of pancreas. Then it comes to lie along its superior border here, as you can see here, and then courses along the superior border of the pancreas, comes to the hilum. In the hilum, it tends to give rise to two important two important named divisions, they are the short gastric arteries, basically they are plural and the left 
gastroepiploic artery. During its course over the superior border of the pancreas, it gives rise to multiple branches which supply the body of the pancreas and the tail of the pancreas. The largest among them is the arteria pancreatica magna. One very important point to be noted is that as it enters into the spleen, before it enters into the spleen, it tends to divide into a superior polar and an inferior polar artery. So, this is a very important point to be noted. And splenic artery is one, as it enters into the spleen, you find that the caliber of the splenic artery keeps on progressively decreasing. So, this is very important to perform a certain function of the spleen called pitting and culling. We will be discussing about it later. Now, the venous drainage of the spleen is via the splenic vein. The splenic vein, you find that it drains venous blood from the spleen and at the same time it receives the inferior mesenteric vein and just behind the neck of the pancreas, it combines with the superior mesenteric vein to form the portal vein. So, splenic vein assessment forms an important component in the management of portal hypertension. Now, within the spleen, what happens within the spleen. So, the spleen on a cross section, it tends to contain two important areas. One is called as a red pulp, another one is called as a white pulp. Now, white pulp basically deals with the immunological function of the spleen or areas which deal with the immunological functions performed by the spleen. Whereas, the red pulp contains cords and sinusoids, basically the blood vessels. So, the white pulp is located around a central artery and this white pulp contains multiple follicles and these follicles have what is called as a germinal center. So, around the germinal center or within the follicles, you have a lot of lymphocytes, basically the lymph B cells as well as macrophages. So, beyond the white pulp, between the white pulp and the red pulp in fact to be precise, is what is called as a marginal zone. So, this marginal zone contains a large number of end arteries which act as a barrier and restrict the movement of materials or substances or movement of uh, structures or movement of materials from the red pulp, from the white pulp into the red pulp. The red pulp contains sinusoids and cords. So, these sinusoids or cords basically come are uh, basically but continue nothing but continuations of the central artery. The central artery gives rise to reticular branches which again subdivide to end in sinuses and cords. Sometimes a reticular artery can directly enter into a sinus and cord and can uh, directly connect with what is called as a pulp vein. So, these sinuses and cords, they communicate with the pulp vein which forms venous drainage which is the initial unit of uh, venous drainage from the spleen. So, these are located within the red pulp. Now, so this circulation which is open is called as an open circulation. So, this circulation or this movement of uh, blood from the sinusoids and from the cords into the pulp vein is an open circulation. So, that constitutes almost 80 percent of the circulation occurring within the spleen. The rest of the 20 percent are closed circulations, which mainly are associated with the white pulp area. Now, the splenic artery, like I said earlier, is a major vessel coming from the celiac trunk. In fact, the amount of blood supplied or blood passing through the splenic artery is around 300 ml per minute, which shows you how important this particular blood vessel is. Like I said earlier, histologically it has red pulp and it has white pulp. The red pulp contains the sinuses and cords. As you can see here, see here this is the red pulp and this is the white pulp. The white pulp has a central artery as you can see here and around the central artery, you find that there will be presence of follicles and the follicles will have a germinal center. 